1978, I was pulling off whole cars like a dime a dozen, back to back sometimes, you know. Well, the murals came in early 1978, uh, and the spring of 78 was the first mural down on Madison Street. Uh, it was the Howard the Duck wall. Me and Fred, uh, Fat Five Freddy, Fred Brathwaite at the time, um, you know, just uh, basically harnessing our talents together, his ability to talk with people and and convey an idea and make it happen and make it materialize into a thing, and my 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 insanity with painting, and his also, you know, he had he's always had a love for the arts, so. We were approached by uh, a gentleman uh, by the name of Claudio Bruni in 1978, I think, late 78, um, um, to, to, to put together a show in Italy, in Rome, Italy, at the La Medusa Gallery with uh, paintings of our paintings on canvas for the first time of our works. And that I knew that you had an interest at that point of who I was because you were in the neighborhood a lot and you were doing film projects a lot of deadly art of survival and other very small things that you were I, would just, I just remember you as a guy as a white boy with a camera my question at the, that fork in the road was wow do I really want to showcase myself and open myself like that to the world like I've never had because I was always under the comfort of my darkness you know the cloak of my darkness and all of a sudden, I was being asked to be part of this thing that was going to showcase the way I did things, the way I operated. And I thought I was going to be painting trains for the rest of my life. I was, I had a sense like, yeah, this is really happening. You know, post, pre-production was in full effect. There were interviews, I remember, at your office on 42nd and 8th of various actors for various positions, but mainly the one, the main, the main character, which was the Zorro character. And, uh, you know, Pink was my girlfriend at that time. And I was like, wow, you know, if anyone's going to take hold of this whole reality and maybe um, show it in the right light with a little sense of, of, um, of, of honest um, precaution, it should be me. A lot of the script which was, you know, scripted, and I ended up studying, became improvised by the sense of the, just by virtue of the moment, as things were happening, because you was in the moment. It was, it was a very magical, special thing for you to actually be there when heads were still wet behind the ears, and the horizon was on, ventured into at that point. So it was like, you captured a very innocent moment, like we weren't acting. If I remember correctly, if memory serves me right, I jumped a turnstile that day, and not not because I was in a rush, I think maybe trying to get somewhere to you, I was trying to get to you, and I didn't notice, like I've always noticed, that there was a sting operation in effect, where they were going after turnstile jumpers and gold chain snatchers. So I jumped myself right into a sting operation, literally, ran into a, 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 a like like a, a gauntlet of cops that were there undercover and they chased me down the stairway. When I saw what was happening and I just jetted into like full warp speed, second gear, I I, I was I had a cop on my shoulder holding onto my shirt. He literally flew off his feet. He would not let go. He was off his feet with me bringing him down with the force and and and, and broke his ankle and I got arrested. And uh, that's what kept me from actually coming to see you. Where were you the night that we shot? In the subway. <laughs> I was home breaking your balls on the phone. <laughs> I remember you and I think one of the other production people, like maybe you and two other people in production were calling me to try to get me to come to set. And I remember you even saying, because I had a little bit of a cold that night or something, and you said, I'll bring, I'll send an ambulance over. <laughs> and now I think I'm like, he would send an ambulance? I didn't want to go. I, 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 the cold was a little bit, I, I probably was amplified a little bit more by, in my voice, by me really not wanting to go, because at that, I don't know why it never dawned on me that we were actually going to shoot on actual locations of subway yards or layups or whatever. But when we were in actual 
when we were in actual sacred ground of tracks and bumpers and trains laid up and the sounds, I was like, no way, Jose, I'm going in there because one, I am not going to cross those lines of, 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 of my discipline and I am not going to um, be there um, with lights on my back, on my face, um, just being open like that. It must have been horrifying for you because here you are in a major set uh, well, a facility that has turned into a set that you only have one day to shoot in because that's all they're giving you. Or else it's going to cost you another 20, 30 grand or whatever it was. It probably was the most expensive set aside from the amphitheater. But, you know, to be there mm-hmm. for the MTA to shut down the, 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 the power at the, you know, various parts of the yard for you to be, sh- it must have been horrifying. You know, I could just think of it now. You know? it so... I was in the comforts of my home watching, you know, the monsters or something. <laughs> You're over there pulling your hairs out. I'm like, oh my God. Jesus, do I have to go to confession for this one, man? You finished the amphitheater painting, and then we came back the following day to shoot the big scene with everybody in it with Graymaster Flash. And the, the background of the amphitheater had been repainted in the middle of the night to a star. Mm. Do you remember that? Yeah, I was having trouble. I was still having a difficult time. Like the film insinuated, I was having a difficult time with the composition. Because, you know, like the the shell, the theater, the amphitheater shell was a very hard thing to navigate. You know, like, you know, just to put, you know, to get a good perspective. I was more concerned with the, the impact of the image when you came up to the steps. The thing is, the fact that you changed it made it really, really difficult with what to do with the film. Well, I wanted to, yeah, as continuity-wise, yeah. I mean, I remember I put up the star because all of a sudden it came to me. I was like, wait a minute, we are all stars. This is all, uh, this is all, this amphitheater is becoming the magnetic force that's bringing, is harnessing all these different sources and forces and and, you know, ethnicities and genders and everything all together to one big, huge, festive explosion of the way it was in the parks back then. Bolton, Sedgwick, uh, you know, Avenue, you know, a Sedgwick section of the Bronx and the Lower East Side. Because, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the shit that was happening in the Bronx was happening downstairs too in the Lower East Side. Not with the rap, but more with the whole tapping in to the, you know, the, the, the light pole, the posts and stuff, and just bringing music to the masses. That's what influenced me in the early 70s, mid 70s, to go painting trains, the music that was going on. Zorro! Yo! Actually, my first experience of it was coming around the corner, and my I had a, a, a yellow Super Sport Nova at that time, sort of street racer car. Came around the corner of 40. 7th 49th Street the film was playing right there at the theater it was up to 49th and Broadway I came around the corner there was a line around the block <laughs> literally around the block maybe up to the next block but I remember coming I was like holy shit and it was mayhem people were just like looking and just trying and then dudes like some heads caught a glimpse of me and they were like Zorro! Like, out of the line. And I was like, whoa! And I, boom! I fucking pulled second gear and I went out of there sideways, you know, burning rubber. But it was just like, all of a sudden, it was like, my character had been recognized. All, after all these years, I was vividly recognized in the limelight, in the popular theater, you know, the popular consensus, you know, like, it was all there. I was like, oh! So it was like, it was so overwhelming for me at that time. And to speed up to the current moment, meeting up for the first time with Most Deaf on Broadway just the other day. He turns around, he's like, 